Aquarium lighting is one of those topics that feels way more complicated than it needs to be. You're researching new lights and you come across terms like PAR, PER, CRI, watts, lumens. Here's the reality and the good news. None of those terms are really that important for you to study. All you need to do is purchase a light from a reputable aquarium plant light manufacturer. We're gonna discuss those brands today and we're gonna talk about how to dial in your light and get the right settings for beautiful, balanced plant growth. So if you find these types of no BS videos helpful, please like the video, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell. It helps get the content out to a wider audience. All right, let's start. The first parameter that hobbyists tend to hear about is PAR. PAR, which stands for photosynthetically active radiation, is just the amount of usable light that plants can photosynthesize with. And yes, there is a time and place for looking at PAR if you're running a super high-tech setup and you're trying to min-max and optimize settings. But here's the good news. For the vast majority of hobbyists, PAR is just not something you really need to consider if you purchase a reputable light. Besides, manufacturers rarely publish accurate readings, and even when they do, those numbers are going to change depending on your tank's depth, your hardscape, water clarity, mounting height, etc. However, if the light is engineered to grow aquarium plants, the PAR is already likely matched to the tank sizes they recommend. So there's really no need to get into the weeds with PAR. Just buy a light that is rated for your aquarium size from a reputable brand, which we'll discuss toward the end of the video. And then there's watts. Watts used to matter back in the fluorescent era, but now we're in the LED era and watts are just power consumption. They don't actually tell you anything about plant growth. A low watt LED can grow plants dramatically better than a high watt fluorescent, for example. So don't judge lighting by wattage, it's an outdated metric. What actually matters is the spectrum of light plants use. Aquarium plants photosynthesize using wavelengths between the 400 and 700 nanometer range blue, green, and red light. Blue and red drive photosynthesis, and the green balances the look so that your tank doesn't appear overly purple or washed out. If that sounds overwhelming, again, the good news is every reputable aquarium plant light already targets these wavelengths, so it's not something you need to get into the weeds about either. But if you're skeptical about a brand or model, you can reference those numbers I mentioned. Now, what actually makes a huge difference for beginners is control. Being able to adjust your lighting intensity is vital in my opinion. Even the best light becomes a problem if you can't dim it down. Intensity is how you prevent algae and give your plants what they need to thrive. In essence, it's matching the needs of your plants and growing the tank at your pace that fits your lifestyle. A strong light becomes beginner friendly simply by running it at 50 or 60%. As your tank matures or when you introduce CO2 or faster growing plants, then you can raise the intensity gradually, but you can only do this if you can modify the intensity. And even better, if your light gives you individual RGB channel control, that's awesome. Depending on the brand, some lighting fixtures come out of the box a little bit too blue or a little bit too red for somebody's particular taste. This used to create a lot of brand loyalty in the industry, with some folks favoring different brands for that light's particular tint. Nowadays, most lights have an adjustable spectrum, so you're able to dial the spectrum in and tune the light to the exact look you're going for. And because most of us are busy, convenience matters too. App-controlled lights, which are becoming ubiquitous in the industry, are a game changer. They allow you to tweak color, adjust intensity, set sunrise and sunset ramps, and automate everything without even touching the fixture. If your light doesn't have an app, just use an app-controlled smart plug or smart power strip. Smart power strips are one of the most underrated tools in this hobby. I preach about them all the time. I have every single one of my aquariums connected to one, all the equipment. I'll link the model I use in the video description. Set your photo period once, automate it, and you never need to think about it again. Consistency is everything. Now for the good part, here's how I personally recommend running your lights based on my 10 years of experimentation in this beautiful hobby. The brands that I recommend looking into are Twinstar, Chihiros, ONF, UNS, and ADA. These are all guaranteed to provide incredible results. If you're going for a lesser known budget brand, I'm not saying it can't work out, but do some deep research. How long should you run your light? Simple, run your light 
for seven hours a day. Doesn't matter the size of the tank, the type of tank, seven hours gets the job done. I run all my tanks at this photo period. When those seven hours happen during the day or night is completely up to you and your lifestyle as long as it's consistent. And now for intensity. Don't run your light at max intensity from the get go. Depending on the demand of your plan, start around 50 to 70% intensity. Give it a month and then adjust in 10% increments only if you need to. But if your plants are happy, just leave the intensity where it is. Another great way to fine tune your lighting is by adjusting the height of the fixture relative to the substrate level. Raising or lowering the light changes intensity naturally, and I tend to rely on height adjustments first when I'm dialing in a new tank before I mess with the actual intensity sliders. So here's the no BS checklist to keep in mind when you're purchasing a light. Buy from a reputable brand, make sure that light produces light in the 400 to 700 nanometer range. If you can, make sure the light is intensity adjustable and even better, get a light that's smart app controlled so you can adjust the intensity, duration, photo period and RGB channels all from your phone. As always, there's just really no need to overcomplicate this topic for the average hobbyist. So if you found this video helpful, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell. But also I'd love to hear from you. Drop me a comment down below. What's your go-to light that you recommend the hobbyist? Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys and gals next time.